Well, students, today I have with me Antoinette Braybrook. It's a pleasure to have Antoinette with me. Um, she is um, the CEO of JIRA, which was formerly known as the Aboriginal uh, Family Violence Prevention Legal Service. But not only that, Antoinette uh, is also the elected national convener of the peak body representing 14 family violence prevention and legal services across the country. It's great to have you with me, Antoinette. Thank you, Rob. So can you just um, give us uh, a bit of an indication as to what your pathway was into law? Was it something you always wanted to do? It was something that I always wanted to do, um, but I left school at a young age, 15, and thought that it was never going to be possible for me to be able to do that. Um, it wasn't a choice to leave school at that age. I was um, forced to leave because of racism and I was always had good marks and all of that at school and I really liked um, you know that side of school but it was it just got tough so and um, and I remember um, in my later years you know trying to um, do different jobs and all of that kind of stuff thinking oh, I'm too old I can't you know study law now and a friend said to me go back and do it you're not too old and it wasn't until five years after that that I went back as a mature age student I always thought it was really glamorous and prestigious and um, uh, it's not that but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that's uh, and I, I just um, used to really admire um, people and I always used to drive um, Lonsdale Street and around the court precinct and look at all of the barristers and and that walking around and just wanted to be there. And so um, a couple of things. Uh, you spoke about racism um, being one of the reasons why you left school. Did you find any of that um, when you were practising law? Um, being an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander woman, um, were there any barriers based on that that you came across? Yeah, look, my experience um, at Deakin University was a good one because I guess I was in the Institute of Career Education with other Aboriginal students. Um, and Aboriginal staff and teachers and that kind of thing. Um, but then, you know, we had um, weekend um, intensives and which I found really quite confronting because um, I thought that I was going to be um, the only Aboriginal person turning up there. I thought that I was going to be probably one of the oldest, but I wasn't um, one of the oldest. Um, when I finished my law degree and I started working as a judge's associate, I remember the very first day that I was in court, the tippy was showing me around the courtroom and um, he showed me in one of the cells at the back of the courtroom and there's this graffiti all over the wall and my eyes went straight to um, this derogatory stuff about Aboriginal people and I thought, gee, this is not going to be a really good experience here. And I spoke to my judge about it and he had the tippy clean out just about every cell in, in, um, wow. in the court to make sure that there was nothing like that in others. So we've got students who are watching this who um, I suppose are wondering, oh, have I done the right thing doing law? Should I have done something else? Um, it's really hard. Did you find the study of law hard uh, and did it help you nonetheless for your future career? Yeah, um, I did find it stressful, hard, challenging because I'd left school at such mm. a young age. I didn't even know how to construct an essay. I didn't know what one was. You know, I would read 50 pages of cases and not know what I was reading. Um, I just wasn't absorbing it. So I had to start from scratch and really retrain myself. Um, and But once I got through the second and um, through to the third year, I started to um, enjoy it and relax a bit more um, with the study. And um, you've been CEO of JIRA since, it, uh, since its inception. Can you tell our students a bit about um, how you came into that role and why um, family violence is such uh, an area of interest for you? So when I was working at the court, a, um, a judge said to me, you don't pick your area of specialty, it picks you. Mm. I wanted to be a criminal law barrister, right or wrong. Um, and, and then it just turned out that um, 
some funding landed in Victoria to establish a family violence prevention and legal service. I threw my hat in the ring with an expression of interest and here I am 17 years later. Um, it's, I remember um, when I was working at the court, um, when I was studying, I always thought, oh no, family law, um, family violence, no, I'm never going to go into mm. that space. But the longer I've been working in um, this area, it's far more than just family violence. You know, the work that we do here is about Aboriginal women and their rights um, and challenging the system in every way, in every way it fails our women. Um, we see in our work how Aboriginal women are um, overrepresented as victims of family violence. Aboriginal women are the fastest growing prison population in the country. There's a clear connection, you know, between um, family violence and women's imprisonment. Aboriginal women are more likely to have their children removed um, because of family violence. So the work that we do is far more than just family violence. And um, it's a very difficult area, obviously, uh, of the law. You're dealing with um, real life problems of real people. Uh, and sometimes you'll, I guess, butt your head up against laws that, as you say, are incarcerating Aboriginal women at extraordinary rates. How frustrating can that be? Uh, and how do you use your legal background to try and change the situation uh, for Aboriginal women? I don't know that I'm using my legal background. Maybe I am. I'm not sure. Um, but what I know I do use is that I'm an Aboriginal woman and these issues are very personal mm. to me. Um, I think that my legal training um, has probably given me some tools to be able to do that much better um, than if I hadn't done that. But um, these issues are very personal to me and my family. Um, I want to make a difference for my nieces, for other younger Aboriginal women so, and I see this work as a way of being able to do that. Well, Antoinette, you are making a difference, um, but you're now speaking to students who also want to make a difference. If you had one or two bits of advice for those students who are either starting their legal studies or getting towards the end of their JD, uh, wondering what area they should get into, what, what one or two bits of advice would you give our students? Well, um, I think, listen to the advice that I got, that your area um, of specialty, um, you don't choose that, it chooses you. Um, just go with it, enjoy it, um, and just, you know, come out the other end wanting to make a real difference. And a message that I guess I would want to give to um, non-Aboriginal law students is just to make sure that um, they're culturally aware and across you know, the, the history of our country, um, the historical injustices experienced by our people and how that manifests today for our people because that will make you a really strong lawyer. How would you encourage or would you encourage um, uh, other Aboriginal people to take up a career path in law? What advice would you give them? Yeah, I think that um, seek out different universities and look at what support's available there for you. And also um, come to Aboriginal organisations like JIRA um, Legal Services and, um, you know, do your PLT here with us. Um, hopefully we could get some funding to support Aboriginal law students to be able to do that. There's an Indigenous Lawyers Association um, hook into that and just on a personal note I guess you know I'm always happy to have a conversation with any um, Aboriginal students or people that want to study law. Well there you go students some great, great advice from uh, Antoinette um, sometimes your career path will actually choose you uh, and you can make a real difference um, and um, if you have the passion and commitment um, that Antoinette has and you think the laws need changing, you can actually do that um, by undertaking a legal career. Thanks very much for joining me, Antoinette. Thank you, Rob.